Hey there people and welcome back on this channel Swiss RC World. Today I'm going to show you how you can uh, make one of these um, omnidirectional cloverleaf antennas yourself because they're quite expensive. Um, actually a 1.2 GHz antenna as you see right here costs about um, $60 and all these pieces I have laid out right here cost about $8 when you buy it on eBay. So we're gonna make one of these ourselves and I'm gonna show you how you how to do that um, I'm gonna build a three lobe three leaf um, antenna for my video transmitter on my aircraft therefore I'm gonna need some copper wire I have one, uh, 0.6 millimeter or 0.8 millimeter diameter um, copper wire really cheap costs about one dollar an SMA connector you could also use a 90 degree SMA connector but it's not an RP, not reverse polarity for my video system. Then you need some coaxial wire, uh, pretty cheap, three meters for about five dollars or something. You need solder, soldering iron, solder paste, a piece of shrink tube, fire lighter to heat up the shrink tube. You're gonna need a caliper to measure uh, where you're gonna uh, bend and cut your uh, your wires. You cut the wire, then you need an ex exacto knife to prepare the, um, the coax wire, and a wire cutter and a flat zipper. So these are all the parts. Get them. You might also uh, want to get a ruler because you won't get uh, what is it, 25 centimeters out of out of this one. So also get a ruler if you cut uh, 1.2 gigahertz antennas because they're uh, they're quite a bit bigger than maybe 5.8 or 2.4 so let's get started heat your uh, soldering iron up and uh, also your hot glue gun so as you can see guys I have already made two of the three lobes we're gonna need um, also put some tin on the tip to solder it onto your cast cable more easily next step and I'm just gonna show you how I made those so take your copper wire Take enough, then straighten the wire, uh, cut it to uh, the length you're gonna need it, which is 22.5 millimeters on mine. I use uh, 1.3 gigahertz, so exactly, I think, 1300 and 60 megahertz, I think, just like that. Straighten it again. Take your cap. Take your caliper. Uh, by the way, if you want to find out uh, which length you need to cut and where you need to bend, I wrote it on this little piece of paper. Uh, you're gonna search the flight test forum for um, David Windstall's um, cloverleaf antennas, and he has a calculator there. You can enter your uh, exact frequency frequency in megahertz, which was 1,360, I believe, and you're gonna get these two numbers. So uh, to bend at 56.4 millimeters, we're gonna enter this in, into our caliper. And then we're gonna take our little zipper. and bend the wire exactly to 56 millimeters just like that try to make a very uh, tight bend right here a 90 degree bend as tight as possible just like that straighten your wire repeat the same process for the other side as tight as possible then we're gonna have this little U shape and now we're just gonna 
put our fingers onto this long side and we're just gonna make a little round just bend it with your fingers actually just like that then lay down it on your desk and you wanna make it as flat as possible That seems to be bad. So then we're gonna put some soldering paste on it. Take the soldering iron, take your solder, and tin the two tips. Just like that. And you have finished your uh, three um, lobes you're gonna get. Uh, three lobes um, are gonna go on our transmitter on the aircraft, and four lobes are gonna go to our uh, receiver. This looks like this. Now we're gonna prepare our coax wire. For this, we need our sharp exacto knife. And first, uh, we need a space to solder on our three lobes we made before out of copper wire. So you wanna go, um, you wanna remove like eight millimeters or something. You don't have to measure it. I just wanna uh, tell you a number. You're gonna uh, remove eight millimeters. Um, of the outer shrink and do not do it like this just put it on there and roll it because you're also gonna cut the wire if you um, if you do it like this so don't do that then you're gonna strip it off then you can see uh, you're gonna remove this this wire just like that we're gonna pull it down as far as we can just like that and now we're gonna make uh, three little uh, three little tips just like that just twist them around each other like that and the third one and make it look like this nice and then we're also gonna remove um, a little bit of our um, of the inner uh, wire or the shrink around it do it the same way do not make it this way just put it on there and roll it just like that and uh, you can roll this if you want you can twist it I mean then next step with our coax wire is to um, <coughs> sorry to put some solder paste on all the three uh, lobes and on the center piece and which is what we're also gonna tin those um, three things a lot of smoke and by the way uh, if if you don't know if you wanna use RG uh, 316 or RG85 oh no, 15 or 85, I don't know really uh, the Cox wire uh, choose the 360 one because this is more heat resistance when you solder an R RG58 um, your whole uh, shrink wrap around it would just melt and uh, you would have a shortcut if you would solder on your antenna and use it so go with the RG316 uh, then if you have tip tinned uh, your wires your three tips and centerpiece 
you're gonna take your um, your lobes then we're gonna remove uh, some space to solder our SMA connector and this one right here we have to solder uh, a little tip onto the inner wire uh, which goes into this hole no from here into this hole and looks like right here though so you have to pin on the antenna this is not reverse polarity this is just a normal one and therefore uh, we have to cut uh, quite a lot of the other of the outer wire away about that much how much is this about 11 millimeters and once again just roll it over there take it off take the wires out from the outer cable and also remove the shrink wrap around the inner wire now if you have done that and if your cable looks something like this and we're first gonna solder on our SMA connector uh, you can do it in whatever order you want, it doesn't matter but I just solder on the SMA first so I'm gonna put the center wire put some solder um, some paste on there tin the tip that. Then uh, take your pin from the SMA connector and just put it in the cardboard right here. Put some solder on there. Insert your air centerpiece. Like that. And try to remove all the solder which is around it then we're gonna test fit it in into our SMA connector by just uh, pushing the pin in there and as you can see I still have some solder on the pin so I gotta remove that just as good as you can let's try it again and there it comes so it looks pretty nice then although that uh, this SMA connector is one to crimp which means I'm gonna put this tube over it and just push it together um, I put some solder on there just to hold it in place firmly get your shrink tube put it uh, put the tube over it you might uh, check again if the pin stands out here that's good and then we're gonna take a zipper <coughs> and we're gonna crimp it just like that as hard as you can and we're gonna slide our shrink tube over it <coughs> and we're gonna heat it up Just like that. Pay attention, these connectors are getting really, really hot. So, uh, then the next step would be to solder on our, our um, lobes we made right here. And we're gonna do that by uh, taking a tool and taking a zipper and a rubber band if I can just find one right here. And this whole thing right here is gonna hold our our um, 
our coax cable and so we have uh, two hands uh, for soldering on our our lobes just like that then we're going to take another stripper I prefer the long one to hold it in my hand and you're going to take your um, soldering iron take the uh, the lobe in your hand with your zipper then put the zipper and the the tip of the lobe which is which should be tinned onto the um the, the cox cable and we're just going to solder down with about a 90 degree uh, I mean a 40 degree and 45 degree angle like this and do not solder on uh, the tip that's what we're gonna do when we have all three um, all three loops soldered on I just wanna see if you can do that by hand with 5.8 you probably can't because then the wire is so short and you're probably gonna burn your fingers so. but with these big loops it's actually possible and it goes quite a bit faster so I'm just gonna do that like that for the camera so then when we have all our loops soldered on and uh, we're gonna bend these to exactly fit onto the onto the tip of the other of the cable we're not gonna just solder it on because then when we solder on the next one it's gonna jump off so then solder on your first tip to the center get the next one it helps quite a lot to have uh, very much uh, solder on, on these uh, lobes because then you don't have uh, to have another hand um, uh, putting some more solder on it so this one just fell off And there we go. Just gonna put some more solder on it right there. Just like that. To finish off our antennas, we're gonna take some hot glue and reinforce uh, our solder joints right here. Just like that. Do that on all the sides. This also. Um, does not let any water through to make a shortcut uh, directly from the wire from the outer wire to the inner wire so it has two reasons and it also gives stability so we're going to do that just like that let that dry and then you have finished your homemade clover leaf antenna um, in the future, I'm probably gonna sell some of these, but first I'm gonna test them. And yeah, congratulations, you just saved a whole lot of money with an antenna. And with these antenna, I believe uh, you have, I don't know, much more range. Um, it is omnidirectional, so it doesn't matter um, how your plane is facing and so on. So, guys, if you like, if you like the video please leave a like rating and don't forget to subscribe if you, if you don't have already see you next time